Uh, Steve Tricks, thank you for a $10 super chat. Can we remind everyone to stop taking the hobby so seriously? Stuff breaks, it's okay. Send it. Uh, it's true, although the time and money you spend fixing your broken shit should not be completely discounted. Steve Tricks, this is not okay. You you are you are uh I Steve Trick says try launching like this. This is this is a, you are I don't like you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh no, it didn't it didn't arm. Did it not arm? It just fell. Oh my god. I don't think it armed. I did not see this quadcopter fly away. It just went foomp. Bad. Very bad. He says we both landed it. No, we landed it. It did arm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you for 15 uh, Malaysian ringgit. From Alan Venrod, who says, this is a long one, but how would you diagnose a noisy quad? Extremely noisy gyro on fairly new quad. Um, Alan, if you have an extremely noisy gyro on a new quad, uh, frankly, my first thought is that you might have a bad gyro. And I, I, I hesitate to rush to the conclusion of bad hardware because it's. A, I feel like it's a bit of a cop-out answer. Like if every time someone asked me a question, I was like, replace the hardware. Like I'm wasting your money and I'm not really doing my job to like try to help you troubleshoot the problem. But that assumes that you are a reasonably competent builder and you haven't made any glaring errors in your build. Okay. So, and, and in order to get like really noisy gyro, I think you have to make pretty glaring errors in your build. So either you have problems with your build like, did you, is it a 3D printed frame? Is it a plastic frame? And you're just not telling me that? Okay. So either there's something mechanically weird about your build, but like even mechanically weird builds usually will fly. So if you have an extremely noisy gyro on a brand new build, potentially you've got a bad gyro. Uh, is there more information in the troubleshooting forum? My uh, my my Discord server has a troubleshooting forum, so people can leave troubleshooting questions and get answers. Just one more reason to become a patron. Here we go. Do we have what I really want from this? Is more? In, can I full screen this, please? Can I full screen this? What I really want is more information. So Foxier S722 Mini, Reaper ESC, what frame? Rush Hussar 5. I don't know that frame, but it's probably fine. Hussar. Uh, it's a racing frame. Uh, come on. Don't do that. So, like, yeah, I, it's, uh, what I would love to see pictures of your build. Oh, here we go. Not a lot here, but like, it looks like, you know what you're doing when it comes to building. Like, it doesn't look like, this does not look like your first build. Your solder joints look really clean. Your wires are neatly routed. I don't, it doesn't feel like you've made like some, like I can see that you've got silicone gummies on your ESC. You haven't done anything. You probably haven't done anything like inexperienced that would cause you to have crazy bad. So like, look, this is a relatively clean build. Nothing's touching your flight controller. And you have crazy bad gyro. I, I think you should replace the flight controller. And just see if that fixes it. You know? And, and here's the thing. Don't just throw out your flight controller. Maybe it's fine. But I feel like it's worth... Like, you're probably... Like, you're, you're a racer, so you're probably going to build two or three of these anyway. So just take a second flight controller, swap it in, and see if that fixes it. Because you're going to potentially, you're like, yeah, but it's going to cost me 60 bucks to buy a new flight controller. Okay, but you're going to spend 10 hours trying to bullshit around fixing this problem. And then in the end, you're going to replace the flight controller anyway. So, like, save yourself 10 hours. Swap the flight controller now. If that doesn't fix it, then spend 10 hours troubleshooting it, and you've got a spare flight controller. 
That's my advice. And now I have screwed up the Blunty is no longer getting the Discord because I, I went in the wrong window. Sorry, Blunty. Let me get back on the live stream chat. Now you're caught up. Um, continuing the uh, Super Chat Bonanza. We were about five away, seven away from the end of the Super Chat Bonanza. Uh, again, we're going to keep doing Super Chats until until we catch up. And then we'll go back to the regular chats. It's been a half hour. and We may, well, um, I said I would keep doing them, so I, I guess I have to. Jason Hine, thank you for a $10 Super Chat. What should I look for on the OG Air unit that took a crash? It works, but it randomly reboots or loses video. Um, this happens across multiple flight controllers. Okay, well, my first thought was that you have a problem with your voltage regulator or your wiring, but if it's if you've changed the flight controller multiple times and it's still doing it, now I agree that it's an air unit problem. And I don't know, like, I don't know how to fix it, right? Is it is like the plug broken? I mean, the only way to service them I mean, I just contact DJI and say, hey, I have a problem and see if they'll fix it under warranty. Like there are places that repair air units if you know what's wrong with them. Like you have a broken antenna connector. I don't know of anybody who will like try to troubleshoot it though. Like probably it's something simple like the plug got damaged and it's losing power. But how do you fix that? Joseph Dahari thinks the MIPI cable is the culprit. But the MIPI cable won't cause it to reboot, will it? I don't know. I guess it's worth... It would be... Did you did you use the same wires each time you swapped FC? If no, replace the wires going between the FC and the air unit. Get a new plug. And then people are saying replace the camera cable. I, I guess that's worth it because you don't want to throw out an air unit. Aaron Grows, thank you for a $10 Super Chat and another $10 Super Chat. Thank you for your generosity, Aaron. I have a Rush Ultimate Plus VTX at 800 milliwatts, and my signal gets distorted when I fly farther away. So far, nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> my JVFPV kit doesn't do this. Tried different antennas, channels, same problem. Any thoughts? Well, the JVFPV kit has lower than... Does it also have 800 milliwatts? I think what you're saying is your Rush VTX gets less range than your JB Kit VTX, even though the Rush should have more output power. One thing you can do if you have the Immersion RC RF power meter is test the output power of the VTXs. The Immersion RC... This is a, this is a great use for... The Immersion RC RF power meter... Now, it is like an $80 or a $90 thing, and it is often out of stock. It is in stock right now. Shut up. Oh, my God. The price has gone up, though. It's in stock. This is a lot of money to spend on something that you will use, you know, five times a year. But when you use it, it solves a problem. Like right now, you don't know if your video transmitter is putting out the power that it says it is. Well, this will tell you if you're in the ballpark of correct. Sure, you should check the antennas for sure. Like maybe you have a broken antenna. On the Rush VTX, also check the LEDs to make sure that the Rush VTX agrees that it is in 800 milliwatt mode. So like sometimes your your VTX table would be messed up in Betaflight and you think you're setting it to 800 milliwatts, but it's not really going to 800 milliwatts. When the VTX has LEDs on the outside, you can check the output power that it thinks it's at. 